Okay guys, here is my GNU review. You've probably seen me fish with this in a few of the videos and I realized I never actually did a video about my GNU and how I like it and some things I've noticed and some recommendations I may have if you're thinking about getting one of these boats. My initial intention was not to have a GNU, but a friend of mine was selling this boat and trailer and it had no modifications on it. And they asked me if I knew of someone in the market and when they told me the price, I said, yeah, me. And now I have it and I'm glad I bought it and I will always have a GNU actually from this point forward. I saw order fish a lot. My 18 foot Mako that's normally right here is in the shop getting a few things done to it. It's brand new so when you get a brand new boat, stuff doesn't work. But fortunately it's under warranty so I took it back to Bass Pro and they're working on it now. So this is my GNU though and I still use this boat 50% of the time because it gets so much shallower. And it's just so much easier to use in shallow water and there's a lot of boat ramps dirt and gravel boat ramps that i can put this in at that it, you can't put any other boat so let's just start right from the front if you notice uh my tongue the bracket here is is slid all the way forward now why is that a lot of people will have this further back they'll have their tire up here and that gives them a lot more room why did i slide this all the way forward well i'll show you why as you can see the back bunk board there is the, the boat is still hanging over a little bit all right this is just me maybe i'm a little bit anal about this but i do not want a whole lot of boat hanging over the back because as i'm hitting bumps and going down the road i just think that puts a lot much more pressure on the transom in the back of the boat so i wanted this to be a lot more supported since most of the weight is back here anyway and that's why i had to move this farther forward up and put the tire right there okay i did install this stainless steel eye hook because uh there was just a this plastic one right here which uh it was already starting to get kind of brittle so i did install that and i just reinforced it with a piece of wood back behind it and some epoxy to give that some strength in the front i did put a uh, stick it pole holder although i don't use it a whole lot because usually i stake out pole from the back but if you are in any chop, you do got a stake out pole from the front. Now, what is this? What is this contraption I put together? It's just a PVC pipe that I glued some uh, chair legs on. And this is just a the corner of a gym mat. And obviously, if you fish it all, you already know what I'm using this for. I can put rods here. And here's why. See, I got this cooler right here. Normally, I've got someone fishing with me. So they have a nice place to sit. This also is my fish cooler. And they can sit their fishing reels right here on this seat and lay their rods right in there. That way the rods don't get tangled and, and run the risk of falling over the sides. So it works really, really well for that. Which brings me to a very important point. Before you start modifying any boat, especially a boat this small where you don't have a lot of room for stuff, fish with it a ton before you start putting modifications on it. I mean fish with it a ton because there's things I would do differently now and there's some things I wouldn't do at all if I would have taken more time to fish with it and get a good idea for where I want stuff, okay? Um, so case in point, this here, and you'll see another one back there, is for a push pole that I had. But golly, a push a 15 foot push pole, what I found was for me, for what I do, I didn't really need it. I never put the push pole in there, so these serve no purpose. So I'll probably end up taking those off. Um, one thing I did do though that I like, oh, here's my paddle. So this serves as my paddle and my push pole. This is not really an expensive one. It's not carbon fiber, so it's a little bit on the heavy side, but it gets the job done. And if you notice the flooring in it, this brand is Black Tip Jet Sports. Um, I think they call it Jet Board or Jet Mat, but it's made by a company called Black Tip Jet Sports. Originally, this boat was all factory. And the first thing I did was when I stood in the boat and when I stood up on the seats, the fiberglass would give a little. And when I would stand on the seat, the outside fiberglass would bow a little. Now, if you're a GNU owner or a canoe owner, you're probably thinking, Matt, that's normal. There's nothing wrong with it. And that may be the case, but I didn't like it. So what I did was I went online. If you notice these angles here, what I did is I researched 
reinforcement boards or our reinforcement material. I wanted something waterproof. I didn't want to use wood and I wanted something light. So what I found was a product called Kusa board. And I'll put a link in the description bar for everything that I'm mentioning, uh, the black tip jet sports mat and this Kusa board. This Kusa board is amazing. It is essentially fiberglass plywood. So it's much more water resistant than wood. And it's a heck of a lot lighter than wood. So I bought a quarter inch Kusa board and I reinforced the seats and I reinforced the bottom of the boat, which made the boat a lot more sturdier and a lot more quiet. And now it is rock solid. I originally had painted over it, but the paint was getting scuffed and scratched really easily. So that's when I started researching flooring and I found the most effective uh, flooring for the price was this black tip jet sports and it comes in a variety of colors self-adhesive back pretty easy to use i'm really happy with it what i really really love about it is it's quiet if you drop a lure or a pair of pliers and you don't have this in your boat it sounds like a shotgun going off but this makes the boat very very quiet uh and and really just adds to my overall enjoyment so the kusa board i highly recommend if you're if you want to reinforce the boat and this i highly recommend if you're looking for some type of a flooring as we go to the back, obviously we have your, your storage here. You can turn this into a live well. I just use it for storage. Um, I did add this little thing here where I can store my pliers, my scissors, some lures. And this is just a PVC pipe that I, that I installed as a rod holder. So I've got an additional rod holder here, stainless steel bolts going through so it's very strong. Also, I can put a big umbrella there. So if I'm trying to get out of the sun, uh, I've got an umbrella that I'll store along the side that I can put in there and get out of the sun. This is my battery box. In here is a very small battery. It's like the size battery you would use for like a lawnmower, for like cranking a lawnmower, but I didn't need something big. My depth finder, my Garmin, uh, this is the Striker. I can't remember the number, but it's like the smallest Striker model they make. And it works great for what I want. Uh, it was like a hundred bucks that runs off that battery. And my engine is also electric start which we'll talk more about that in a little bit, but I did want electric start because I would be starting and stopping a lot, moving a lot. Of course, it still does have the pull cord just in case the battery goes dead. Got my fuel tank here. This is just a factory fuel hose that came with the engine. I got the engine brand new. Um, in hindsight, I wish that was a little bit uh, longer and maybe I could put the gas tank and the battery on this side of the seat to keep a little more weight forward. But I, I kept that weight toward the center as much as possible just to keep the boat balanced out a little bit to be able to float pretty shallow. Um, of course, you got your drainage areas in there. Make sure you don't cover those up if you do install some type of a flooring. Uh, got my manual bilge pump. That's always important in case you got a lot of rain or take a wave or two over the bow, you have that. And I just keep this here in the back. And usually, see I've got my, I do have an automatic bilge pump right there, just in case, which has saved my butt several times in some rough chop. I'm able to focus on getting back to the ramp and letting that get the water out. And of course that runs up to my battery up there as well. And I do have a piece of Kusa board that I have cut into like a triangle that I lay in here. So you don't see any of this and it keeps my tackle bag and my life vest up out of the water. If you do got any water back in there, um, check this out. You might make fun of me for this, but this is my rod holder. See, I can hold three rods in here. Originally, the reason why I designed it like this was because my push pole was so long going to front to back. I needed something to rest the push pole on back here. But again, now I don't use the push pole, which means this whole assembly is a lot more than I needed. I may eventually remove this and install something nicer looking like a Scotty rod holder with, with the triple uh, rod holder attachment because I do hold three rods in here, but it is a great place to have a rod holder. You can see I installed a rod holder right there and I also installed one right here. These two, they're not horrible, they're not in the way, but not needed, okay? What I figured out was we got with two people putting the rods here is the best place for the person in the front. And then putting my three rods in this holder here is the best for the back. 
All right, so we've got my on-the-fly jack plate. There is a separate video where I describe my on-the-fly jack plate, so definitely watch that video. Uh, and this is my Mercury 99. Now, why did I go with Mercury? It's a great motor. I have no complaints. Um, it is kind of cold starting first thing in the morning. You got to do a lot. You got to talk to it just right to get it to crank up. But then once it's started the first time, it runs great the rest of the day. Uh, the reason why I went with Mercury 99 is that at the at the time, and it's probably still true, Mercury is the only brand that had a 9.9 .9 horse with the electric start. Okay, there are plenty of other 99s, but Mercury has the only 99 with an electric start, and so that's what I went with. I did recently just install the hydrofoil. You can watch a video on that for tips and techniques. Learn from the mistakes that I made with the hydrofoil. And I uh, haven't got a chance to use that yet, but I think that's gonna be a big advantage. There's my uh, transducer for my depth finder. And here's my stakeout pole. Now, I'm gonna save you guys a bunch of money with this tip. These stick it or whatever brand stakeout poles you buy can be $100, $200, $300. There is a website, which I will link in the descrip description bar, called Max Gain Systems. And you can buy these fiberglass rods of any diameter you want. And I just took a bench grinder and ground it to a tip at the bottom, although you can buy a stainless steel tip to glue on there. And I just did my own PVC handle, uh, T handle, although again, they have all those accessories. But you can buy pretty much all this for like 30 to 50 bucks. Then maybe you add 30 bucks for shipping and you're looking at about 60 to $70. Well, I mean, you're looking at less than a hundred bucks, no matter how you slice it, a lot cheaper than buying the already pre-made one from a retail store. And I just have that. I will put it through my little uh, holder that I made here, my bracket, or the one that I have in the front. So that is my GNU. Um, Get you get a good laugh at my headlight here. I uh, I just got to tell you this story real quick. So I was driving down a dirt road going to a boat ramp and I noticed something flashing behind me. This PVC arm that I had built to get the lights out of the water, it had fallen down. It had actually, the glue had just broke from the vibration, which I actually have put um, a screw through it now. So that will not happen again, but it had snapped loose. It cracked the headlight. Um, the headlight was still working though. So I'm like, well, I'm not gonna replace the headlight just yet because it's actually still working. So I just use this, this red headlight tape and I'll just keep doing it until it stops working and then I'll replace it. But the whole idea to me of having a GNU is that I wanna be light and I wanna be simple and I don't wanna spend any more money than I have to. And it's been great for that. Here is by the way, the holder for my stakeout pole. I just cut a little piece of PVC, screwed it in, and I've got this piece here that I wrapped something around to hold that in place. So that's my little GNU fishing machine. It's simple, but guys, it is effective. And like I said, I'll never go without a GNU ever again because I just love it. I think it's a great entry level boat to start saltwater fishing. Just keep in mind, you don't wanna be taking this out into big wide open bays and into big rivers with a lot of heavy boat traffic because it is not meant for big waves. But as long as you're floating and fishing shallow uh, and in rivers and marshes and things like that, you're gonna love it.